These are the One More Spearhead Virex gaming headphones. I've been using them as a main driver on my second work PC for several months now. They've been used for everything from music, gaming, and even several live streams. I've definitely had fun with these cans and I'm going to be breaking them down in a lot more detail in this video. This headset is also special in that it brings a head tracking technology where the sound in a game, movie, or whatever will react to where you tilt your head and definitely has a big potential for an in-depth VR experience. But before I talk about the virtual reality and features more in depth, I will dive into what comes with the headset in the box. First of all, the box itself is something shelf worthy with a textured matte surface on the front of the box and a nice almost blueprint art inside. If you're making up a tech altar in your man cave, it will definitely be well placed. Next inside is a nice leather bag for the headset, an instruction book, 3.5mm cable, USB cable and a sticker. The leather bag is definitely something useful if you're taking them around with you and is of a nice quality, though for the most part I've been wearing them around my neck in public using the 3.5mm cable and on into my phone for music and videos whilst in transit. Plus with the USB cable and that 3.5mm cable it is compatible with PC, Xbox Xbox One, PS4 and whatever device like a smartphone that has that 3.5mm audio jack. So a bit of a jack of all trades. Next up let's talk about the comfort of these headphones as you may be wearing these on your head for hours on end and I've definitely fallen victim to naff cans before that left your skull feel a little crumpled and ears sweaty. Though it is safe to say that with this headset, the Spearhead VRX, it is opposite being very comfortable on the top of your head with an adjustable band that is also soft underneath. You can end up having the headphones on for hours and not really noticing they are resting on the top of your head at all. The Ear Cups 2 are comfortable being extremely soft and having a quite wide area for your ears to live in. One of the only slightly disappointing factors is there isn't an option to change this to a fabric ear cup, which personally I do prefer. Though as leather cups go, these are soft and I haven't had any issues. I guess it comes down to personal preference really. Moving on to the sound, I must admit I'm no big audiophile. Although I have always spent a lot of money on mixers, amps and sound cards in my time for video commentary and editing, so I am used to good sound. This headset then generally sounds great. The sound is clear and punchy enough, Although I'm definitely also not a bass head, the bass drives in the cans can really pack a punch. When there's explosions and things going on around you, even at the lower levels of the setting that you can control by pressing a physical button on the headphones, have a big punch. The 7.1 surround, surround sound also seems to work well at pinpointing enemies in FPS games. And this is actually where things get interesting, as there is a head tracking feature via Waves NX that will take you closer to the sound depending on where you position and rotate your head. For the most part, it almost acts like being between speakers. So if you angle yourself to a source, you'll, he you'll hear that source more clearly. So if you're in a room and you go towards one speaker, you'll hear that speaker more loudly than a speaker further away from you. It kind of works like that. So whilst watching movies, it's almost like being in a cinema or area with surround sound and positioning yourself close to one of the speakers in particular. Although I do not have a Vive or Oculus, or Oculus Rift to test VR and virtual reality, unfortunately, I could definitely see this feature working out there and taking that experience to the next level as you actually do move your head physically in the 3D space with the headset. So tracking will correspond with your position in the 3D space too. So it just gives you that extra level of immersion. I've also played a little bit with single player games on a monitor and it is quite a bit of fun and a little bit extra immersion. Play versus player games are a little bit more of a question mark. Though while saying that, the first match where I played Apex Legends to try and show off the headset as like B-roll footage, I actually won the game with the head tracking software enabled. Though yes, that particular feature probably didn't help me get that win there. Also something to mention on these headphones is that the noise cancelling is pretty insane. I've worn these on an airplane quite a few times, plugging them into the in-flight entertainment and it does and it does actually drain out a lot of the sound from the airplane. Yeah, sure, it's not all the way, but they do get rid of a lot of it. And I fell to sleep quite a few times wearing these headphones because I was able to get used to the background sound. Plus, if you're wearing them at home, if other people are trying to talk to you, they have to get really close and try and shout to actually get through to you. So yeah, that's another element as well because you can immerse yourself into games and things without having any of the background sounds going off behind you. Uh, unless it's something actually important though. <laughs> also on sound, it is definitely worth talking about the microphone, which is decent for saying that it is a pin mic, and it's also accompanied by two rear microphones that record ambient noise like computer and household fans, then noise cancel those out for clearer comms. There is also an LED lit almost lightsaber appendage from the side of the headset, which will glow when you're speaking through the microphone, though these again are not the microphone itself. It's actually 
housed on the opposite headphone cam. There's also a physical microphone mute button, so you don't have to alt and tab into Discord or whatever communication app you have. And I guess if you're on console, you'll need to use that anyway. Plus, you can just judge for yourself the quality of the communications as I'm going to put in the test here. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is the Spearhead VRX gaming headphones microphone. Testing, testing, one, two, three. What does everybody think about this sound? Saying that I have done a stream or two where I've forgotten my blue snowball or my other work PC's microphone, and these were, they, they were okay, they could do the job, and will definitely do everything you want for voice comms, though they are not a replacement for a dedicated mic for sure, especially studio microphones and things like that, like, you know, you're recording microphones, like, things like that, not that you would expect that from a gaming headset most of the time anyway. Up next is build quality, and I think this is definitely one of the headset's strong suits. The headband and connecting pieces are all a sleek and lightweight metal. There's a welcome break from a lot of the very bulky and plasticky options in the arena of high-end gaming headsets. It very much looks sleek to wear on the head and I've happily worn these out on buses and around the city centres whenever I'm on my travels. And the parts where there are plastic is usually the RGB elements or actually part of the headphones themselves and are often sturdy without being too bulky. And with the RGB software controller, I think the LED effects are quite good and customizable, but also not too over the top. The cups too are mounted on quite a malleable plastic that allows you to quite freely twist the headphones, so they always pretty much mold perfectly to your head. Plus the inner red fabric over the audio driver with the R and the L for left and right are a nice little touch there. Something that's often quite a weak point in adjustable headbands is that it can have snap if they have a poor quality band. Though, again, that is definitely not the case here. With the plastic runners, are under less stress it seems, whereas most of the stress goes to the center of the band, which is like a leather fabric-y thing. And the plastic runners also are sturdy plastic and have a raised middle that seems to give it more support. So these should definitely last for a long time and I've had no troubles so far. The outside of the headphone casings too has a sleek repeating circular pattern, which is almost like the poster for the film Moon. But again, it's minimalistic and elegant and as that whole design the headphones are going for. Moving on to the price. This headset is currently £149.99p on Amazon in the UK and $199.99 in the US on Amazon. And it's definitely up there with other pricey flagship gaming headsets. I think the thing to set it apart from the competition is build being a bit more of an elegant metal frame and minimal design versus some of the other chunkier plastic big hitters on the market at that sort of price. Plus that unique nature of the head tracking. So in conclusion, this headset has been a very worthy daily driver with great sound, comfort and design that has lasted the test of time. They are a flagship gaming headset and like I said, have the price to follow that. Although whilst matching a lot of the competitors in performance, I think it comes down to preference on whether you prefer the more sleek and slightly less over the top design. And if you're personally interested in that VR experience and increased immersion in games that the head tracking, which is unique, can give. And that is pretty much the Fiat VRX gaming headphones broken down. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Until next time, Joshino.